Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And should I be calling myself Sicky Baby today, as you might hear from my voice? Yeah, if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded any videos on the channel this week, it's literally been a week since my last upload, because I have been very under the weather, as you might hear. The fact that today is going to be a, 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 a replay of love, because I'm still feeling absolutely awful, but I, I really can't sit by and let another day miss. I, I get really anxious, and I get really... Uh, really bored when I'm sitting here not doing anything. I've played a hell of a lot of League of Legends, man. I've been playing far too much. I've watched a bunch of series on TV, including some awesome tank um, episodes, which, oh, I can't remember the title of it, but I'll, I'll have to let you know what it was. And I'm sitting here still crazy, actually just wanting to, to make some videos again. And so here we go. I'm playing myself in the Kranvang in the 1.5 update, which just hit this European server on Thursday. Now, the Kranvang has been significantly buffed. This tier 10 Swedish auto-loading heavy tank was known and still is known as the master of the ridgeline. With 12 degrees of gun depression and incredible frontal turret armor, this thing is able to bounce pretty much everything. I would let anything, bar maybe a Jagdpanzer E100 that I knew that was firing heat, just shoot me in the front of the tank in the turret. Because it's not going to deal damage to me more times out of 10 than not. But, if you can find weak points on the enemy vehicles, then the 120mm that this thing packs with decent penetration on its stand in rounds of 252 and 300 of its heat rounds will be able to contest the front of those vehicles. So what have Wargaming done? Well immediately, if you look in the middle of your screen, you might notice, oh, well, why has this thing got three rounds? And also, when I moused over the cursor, why does this thing now do 440 damage? That's because previously, this tank had by far the weakest gun out of the T-57 Heavy or the AMX 50 b However, Wargaming have now changed it so that it has 440 alpha damage with its 120mm main armament. However, they've taken one of the rounds away. Previously, this had four rounds at 1,600 magazine potential. Now that it has three rounds, it's going to dip down to 1,320. So, that's a significant amount of alpha damage removed from each magazine. You know, you, you can't just brush over losing, what is it, 280 alpha damage off the magazine. But what do you notice about the Kranvang that I'm doing that you couldn't do previously? Yeah, this thing is reloading outrageously quickly now, ladies and gents, with a base reload speed of 21 and a half seconds, whereas previously it was 33. That's right, Wargaming have effectively increased the damage per minute of this vehicle by 30%, which now makes it the second highest DPM heavy tank in the game after the T-57 heavy. That's right, Super Conqueror move over, this, a vehicle which is renowned for its incredible damage per minute and hold down capacity with 10 degrees of gun depression, unlike the T-57 heavy, which I think packs eight. This thing now has the turret, the gun depression, and the DPM to simply be able to overwhelm its opponents. And you're noticing within the first three minutes of this game, whoa, we are doing some filthy work here. That's the new tier 10 Swedish Sorry, that's the tier 9 Swedish medium tank. And we just put a couple of rounds into him, finishing him off. And we just roll for 497 on that WZ 1115A. That was... Excuse me. No! Oh, the home key sets it back to the beginning of the replay. Oh, goodness. Okay. Cut, cut, cut. I... I, I I rebound my home key so I could mute the microphone so I could still be able to do this. Ah! Oh. Alright, so back to where we are. That's what I get for trying to be nice and not having to, to let my uh, YouTube audience hear to the, the sound of me coughing, which I can't imagine is very nice in this, this, this rather good road microphone, right? So we've covered the combat capacity of the Cranvine just being increased. But that's not all. You'll also notice this thing is unloading quicker. That's because Wargaming have decided to change the unload speed of this tank from 3 seconds down to 3.75. Now, while that's still not nearly as good as the 2 seconds that the T-57 Heavy has, which allows the, the best damage per minute tank, uh, heavy-wise, in the game, to be able to uh, deal 6, uh, unload its full 1,600 damage magazine within 6 seconds, this tank is still now by far, far more competitive because its alpha damage has increased by 10%, and now it has that slightly faster unload speed as well, which is very important. One thing I've been finding with the Kranvang as well is that while the magazine has been reduced because they've taken a whole round out of the magazine, which doesn't quite make up for, well, the alpha damage doesn't quite make up for, I, I never really needed those four rounds previously all that much, and to have three rounds and then be ready to go so quickly again after has turned this tank completely around. 
Now it's no longer this slow trundling beast that gets around and just tries to pick up some damage wherever it can. This is a full blooded damage per minute monster. And with its top speed limit, a decent top speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour and a reverse speed of 18 kilometers an hour, unlike the T57 Heavy, this thing gets around. But that's not it. I feel like I'm a tank salesman here right now. And it's, it's just how the vehicle is. That's not it. They've also decided to increase the engine power of the vehicle by 15%. Can you believe it? So now this thing can get around more like a, a faster heavy. Sure, it's not like an AMX 50B. You, you shouldn't really worry too much if you're an AMX 50B driver. But I would also worry a little bit because this vehicle is now strongly competing for the AMX 50B. What is this Lynx up to? Let's send him back to the garage, shall we? We nearly kill his entire tank in two shots there, 880. And oh, he just was in the air flying through and gravity beat me there. Look at this guy jumping all around. It looks like this Lynx is coming straight at me. I guess he thinks he's reloading. And look at this. I've got an AMX 1390 to my right, an LTTB as well. And I get shot once, shot twice. Just trying to do my best. The A the Lynx actually crashes into one of those light tanks, which saves me quite a lot. We finished off the 1390, and I was nearly ready to finish off the LTTB. So what did we learn there? That, yeah, we, we unloaded. Maybe if we'd had that extra round, we would have been able to kill the Lynx with the fourth shot, because the kids are considering the third one missed. But the fact that we were able to then reload and then engage the AMX 1390 and almost be able to engage the LTTB was just absolutely... Absolutely incredible. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not very good with this whole muting the mic thing mid um, rambling, I guess is what we're going to call it. But hey, how long? How long have I been commentating here? Six and a half minutes, boys and girls. Do you see what damage we're up to here? Boop, right there. 8,000 damage in this tank. And I'm hoping that we can manage to bump it up a little bit. There's one into the side of the Emil. Two down onto his Halama. Can we finish the lad off? Not quite. Who should I go for? Emil Halama? And the bat chap finishes off the T-57 Heavy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this tank is sick. It really is, and I am too, right? <laughs> so this was a game from the release of the patch, and yet I've already set a new damage record for myself in the Kranvang. Previously, it was quite hard to be able to deal that much damage in the Kranvang because it didn't have enough rounds. But Wargaming also has that covered because they've increased the amount of rounds this thing can carry from 40 to 48. But remember, you've got to take into the fact that also the alpha damage of the rounds themselves have increased rather than just the amount that you can carry in the vehicle, meaning this thing has a potential damage now if you penetrate all of your rounds of 21,000. This is brilliant for a Kranvang driver because what that allows you now to do to take a, a plethora of AP shells or APCR shells and heat shells as well so you don't feel like you're wasting credits at the end of the game like I was here. This had been in the Kranvang in the previous patch. Well, I probably wouldn't have fired all my AP rounds anyway because I couldn't have reloaded them quick enough to spend them in the short amount of time that this game went on. But you, you get my point. Nothing's worse than at the end of the game unnecessarily firing heat rounds, like I was here. Because of course that's going to dig into your profits, although we did make 34,000 with the, our premium account in this game. But it really feels like Wargaming have basically taken everything that held back the Kranvang and just blown it out the park and just improved all of the, the right statistics, the things that actually held this tank back. But, call me cynical, but why? Why has this happened? As the whatlife.com statistics show, the Kranvang had a 50% win ratio. What was Wargaming really thinking is going to happen to the Kranvang? I can see this skyrocketing probably up into the 54% the mark. Especially as a lot of, shall we say, people who play to win realize the power of this tank and start taking them out onto the battlefield more. Whereas I feel like those power players were either playing Amex 50Bs or T57 Heavies before because the Kranvang was just too slow lumbering and it didn't really have the damage per minute. And sure, while it had incredible turret armor, it just didn't have the combat capacity to be able to, to press the advantage when one was created. But it definitely had the capacity to hold the line and slowly grind out a tank that it found itself against in a favorable position. And all in all, if a complete Muppet like me can smash out 9,200 damage and 1,440 base experience points in, in less than seven minutes on the first day that this thing has been released, I think a lot of people are going to start doing that, if not doing more so. The buffs to the Kranvang are definitely not micro steps to seeing how far they would need to take the vehicle to make it relevant as to are more so just buffing the vehicle astronomically to now at least in my opinion making this one of the most competitive if not the most competitive tier 10 heavy tank although remember this thing isn't well rounded 
it's not flexible like an IS-7 or a WZ-1115A. Definitely needs to find itself on a ridge line and it needs to have time to work and while its engine power has been buffed, it still needs time to be able to get there. But if you can control the engagement and you learn how to play the Kranvang and you learn the positions on the different maps where it can have an astronomical impact in the battle, then ladies and gents, you might find something that will have no comparison in World of Tanks. And so ladies and gents, that's it for today. I'm sorry about my voice. I'm sorry about being sicky baby today, but hopefully you can still see that I'm I'm passionate. Uh, the, the, the soul is willing if the body is trying to hold it back, right? Hopefully you appreciate it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Saturday, I don't care if I'm sick. I'm gonna go do a Tech Tree Showcase right now anyway. And who would have guessed it? Out of the 575 of you who voted, the most want to see the Kranvag. And so if you want to see my full opinion of this vehicle, and importantly, the buffs to the Emil and the Emil 2 before this tank, they come along right now. I'm sure this is going to be a Tech Tree Showcase to remember. And I'm wondering to just how much worse my voice could get, right? As I make my way up the entirety of the Swedish auto-loading heavy tank tech tree so you can see what the new capacity of this line is all about. So I'm really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And oh, just uh, another passing mention, my mod pack will be out when XVM actually has a working version. I'm currently testing a bunch, but it's some it's causing some crashes in the, the gaming result, the gaming, the gaming result screen, uh, you know, that you get when you go back in to your garage. The Wargaming's new three times multiplier and the way that the UI works it, I think is messing with XVM a bit. So I'm gonna wait for a full stable version before I try and release something. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.